There's new data from the CDC that shows COVID hospitalizations increased during the last week of July, and this comes as tracking reinfections of the virus continued to wane after the public health emergency ended in May. ABC News medical contributor and epidemiolo epidemiologist Dr. John Brownstein is joining us now for more. So thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Brownstein. And those hospitalizations, they went up, you know, 12.5 percent during the end of July compared to the week prior. So. Realistically, how does that compare to the peak of this pandemic, and do we need to be concerned? Yeah, well, well, Kena, we do have to be concerned to a certain degree and be vigilant. And we are seeing a lot more people around us getting COVID. That being said, those numbers still remain incredibly low. If you put it into perspective, we've seen about 9,000 weekly hospitalizations. We had about 150,000 during the height of the Omicron peak, so still such a small fraction. And we haven't seen any changes in deaths, so there, there could be reporting delays. A lot of these increasing cases are related to this new variant, the EG5, but it's really descendant of Omicron. So our existing treatments, our tests, our vaccines all work. So yes, we should watch these numbers and be concerned, but overall, this isn't a big change in the pandemic. And what about protecting ourselves? You know, a lot of people need to stay inside during the hot weather. Other people are doing a lot of traveling over the summer. Yeah, I mean, I think we have to be concerned about aggregation. It's raining really badly here in Boston. People are coming together. That is a recipe for transmission. That being said, we have the tools to protect ourselves. We have the vaccines. We have an upcoming booster shot that I urge people that are eligible to get that booster shot. Overall, we have the tools. People just need to follow local guidelines and understand that in situations where you have high transmission, you want to try to find ways to reduce risk. So that ultimately is something that we can all abide by and help to reduce transmission heading into the fall. And the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services recently announced it's opening an office that will focus on long COVID research and will launch some clinical trials. So how significant is that and what are researchers hoping to learn there? Yeah, Kena, this is a really big deal. This is the largest investment in long COVID that we've seen to date, over a billion dollars. And this is important because one in 13 adults suffer from long COVID. That's about 7.5% of the population, over 20 million people. So it represents a massive burden. And so we need to fully understand and appreciate why long COVID happens. So we have to understand the causes, we have to understand better treatments, and we have to provide better care. So this is an amazing initiative that hopefully will help a lot of people. All right, ABC News medical contributor, Dr. John Brownstein, thank you for your time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.